Holy Sepulchre. Look up to see the Risen One. On Saturday, March the 30th, in the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre, the Vigil of All Vigils, presided over by His Beatitude, Cardinal Pier Battista Pizzaballa. Easter in Jerusalem. Today, as Mary of Magdala and the Apostles at the Holy Sepulchre. Easter Sunday Mass celebrated at the Holy Sepulchre. Cardinal Pizzaballa, in the spirit of the Risen One, we want to be the yeast that ferments all the dough, torches lit in the night, and seeds of good in a land torn by conflicts. Stay with us. Although hope seems lost today, commemorating the appearance of the risen Lord to his disciples in Emmaus is an occasion to remind us that Christ is waiting for us with open arms and opens the doors of hope and mercy to us as well. Christian Worship, a Biblical Theological Refresher Course in Jerusalem. Three days of training, open to students from all over the world, were offered by the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum in Jerusalem. The theme of the course, Christian Worship in Sacred Scripture and the Holy Land. After the blessing of the new fire, the assembly heads to the empty tomb, the place where Christ passed from death to life. The church celebrates the resurrection of the Lord. Considered the mother of all holy vigils, the celebration in Jerusalem takes place in the very location of the Anastasis. The Easter candle is engraved by the celebrant, and then lit with the light that comes from the tomb. Presiding over the Holy Mass were his Beatitude Cardinal Pier Battista Pizzaballa, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, Archbishop Adolfo Tito Iana, Apostolic Nuncio in Israel, an Apostolic Delegate in Jerusalem and Palestine, the co-celebrating bishops and numerous priests from many parts of the world. Despite the war, the liturgy was also attended by groups of pilgrims and local communities. A particular liturgy full of details that aims to convey, through its symbolism, the Easter mystery of Christ's life. Everything expresses the goodness of God, who did not let the darkness of death prevail. The liturgy of the Word meditates on the wonders that the Lord has done for his people from the beginning of time and trusts in his word and promise. After the seventh reading, the Gloria is intoned and the lights are turned on. The Gospel of the Resurrection is proclaimed in front of the empty tomb. In his homily, the Patriarch emphasized that the Easter liturgy is built around this place as well as for the life of the entire church. And from Jerusalem, as the disciples of Jesus did, the first announcement of this light that illuminates our gaze, which must be directed at Christ, looking at the signs of his resurrection, is made. To meet the risen one, it is necessary to learn to recognize the signs of his presence, the way in which he comes into our history. To see the signs of the risen one, it is therefore necessary to look up. This is what we most need today, to look up. The terrible days we are living have closed us in, seem to have nullified our expectations, closed every road, erased the future. Even our relationships seem reduced, wounded by distrust and misunderstandings, when not by betrayals. Around us, everything seems to speak of failure, just as Jesus' death seemed like the failure of a beautiful project of rebirth, change and new life that the disciples had bet on. Our aims for peace and reconciliation, for dialogue, seem to have failed today. Jesus broke down the gates of the realm of death with the only weapon death cannot resist, which is love. If we remain in love, we are no longer prisoners of death. 
death that held man in its power, that locked him in its realm of loneliness and silence, no longer has the strength and ability to keep anyone prisoner. If we love, we are free, we are risen. We are here in front of this tomb then to ask that the stone be removed and that the light of the Lamb shine again on our eyes. We are here to ask for the courage of that love which has the power to overcome the fear that today grips us and binds us. In this sea of hatred that surrounds us, we want to ask for the courage to look up to see the stone of our tombs removed. The good that is done, the courage of lives given, the tenacious desire of many men and women to build relationships of peace the unresigned pain of those who do not give up betting on others. After the homily, the promises of baptism are renewed and the patriarch blesses the water, which is then sprinkled on the faithful. And there, in front of the empty tomb, Everyone is invited to participate in the feast that the Lord has prepared with his death and resurrection. This is the night in which you conquered the darkness of sin with the splendor of the pillar of fire. This is the night that saves all believers in Christ across the earth from the darkness of sin and the corruption of the world, consecrates them to the love of the Father and unites them in the communion of saints. This is the night in which Christ, breaking the bonds of death, rises victorious from the tomb. At 9.30 a.m., the bells of the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre ring out. It is the Feast of Feasts, the Easter Resurrection. Accompanied by the friars of the custody of the Holy Land, His Beatitude Cardinal Pier Battista Pizzaballa, Patriarch of Jerusalem of the Latins, enters the Basilica to preside over the celebration of the Solemn Mass. Local Christians and small groups of pilgrims wait. Bishops and priests con celebrate with grateful hearts. This celebration is absolutely unique. What is proclaimed here, Christ's victory over death, is something that really happened in this place. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to this tomb in the morning, when it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. This gospel will be proclaimed again later, during the procession around the wayside shrine. In his homily, the patriarch touched on many fundamental points of Jesus' Easter, this event that involves us transforming our painful present into the experience of life as trust in the Father's love. The Gospel speaks of night and darkness which, however, no longer frighten, for they are about to yield to the light of the looming morning. It speaks of mighty stone, but overturned and no longer enclosing anything, of disciples running, of cloth signs of death that no longer bind anything of eyes that see, of hearts that believe, and of scripture revealing itself to full understanding. It is a gospel full of momentum and life. It is a word of life that still reaches us today and touches our hearts. We want at this time to express special thanks to the Holy Father, who in a beautiful letter invited us to be lighted torches in the night. We ask and pray for a repetition for us of that event that changed the lives of Mary of Magdala, of Peter and John, and then of all the other disciples, and after them so many prophets and saints of all times. And so in the spirit of the risen one, we want to be the leaven that ferments the whole dough, torches lit in the night and seeds of good in a land torn by strife. The little remnant that does not give in, does not retreat, but with enthusiasm and courage, having conquered all fear, goes before him. In Galilee, in our homes, in our churches, where man is alone or lost, that is where we want to go, to say once again that the Lord has visited us, we have seen him, 
the risen one is still here among us and everywhere he goes before us. He is waiting for us, the patriarch concluded. Making a procession along the route of the basilica, the Easter gospel is then sung in the four versions of the four evangelists, as if wanting to extend its immeasurable richness in all possible dimensions, so that the event that saves the life of man and the world from the place of the resurrection reaches all the ends of the earth. Buona Pasqua di Risurrezione e buona festa di luce e di vita per tutti. A Masiach Kam, a Kan Kam. Christ is risen, is truly risen, indeed is risen. Happy Easter to all of you. Although hope seems lost today, commemorating the appearance of the risen Lord to his disciples in Emmaus is an occasion to remind us that Christ is waiting for us with open arms and opens the doors of hope and mercy. On April the 1st, the custody of the Holy Land commemorated the appearance of the risen Lord to the two disciples of Emmaus, Cleopas and Simon. The Mass, celebrated in the sanctuary of al Qubeba Church, was presided over by Father Francesco Patton, Casas of the Holy Land, together with the custodial vicar, Father Ibrahim Faltas, and numerous priests, in the presence of a large crowd of faithful. When we see that uh, there are difficulties, when we see that uh, the night is coming, uh, not simply the night of the day, but uh, the existential night, uh, we have to invite Jesus to stay with us. Jesus, uh, uh, in this place, uh, broke the bread, and when he broke the bread, uh, the disciples recognized him. And this shows us that uh, it is uh, important uh, to share the bread in the Eucharist, but when we share the bread in our communities, in our families, uh, we can recognize the presence of uh, Jesus. As Christians, we are proud of our Christianity in the Holy Land, despite all the suffering and economic, social and political tragedies. We came here today, renewed our faith that freed us from fear, and the encounter with the Lord filled us with joy and happiness. Father Zahir, guardian of the shrine, said in his homily that when we are in trouble, we return to the Eucharist and ask, as the disciples of Emmaus said, stay with us. Our presence here remains as leaven, as salt, which gives flavor to this life. We remain here as witnesses of Christ's resurrection, witnesses of the hope that comes from the resurrection. We remain here to serve humanity and this holy place. The faithful prayed and called for peace throughout the Middle East and for pilgrims, who are one of the lungs of the local Christian body, to return to the Holy Land. We are very happy that today we have pilgrims coming from Bethlehem, from Jerusalem, from Ramallah, from uh, many other villages uh, of uh, Palestine, and also uh, groups of uh, pilgrims uh, arriving here. I invite the pilgrims uh, don't uh, be afraid, uh, don't fear, come, we need you and you can uh, come and visit the holy places in a safe way and in this way you can express your solidarity to the local Christians of the Holy Land. You can show them your brotherhood and your friendship. Please come.
Like every year, the week in Albis, the octave of Easter in Jerusalem, is a time rich in events and opportunity to grow in Christian life and ecclesial communion, especially thanks to the refresher courses offered by the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum, now in their 47th edition. We are at the 47th edition of BTRC, Biblical Theological Refresher Course. It is a course that the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum offers to a wide audience of people coming from all over the world, religious men and women, laymen and laywomen. It is also a tool for evangelization. This year we focused on worship. It is important. This is both in scripture and in the early Christian communities. Worship in sacred scripture and in the Holy Land in the first centuries of Christianity is this year's theme, a theme that touches the life of the church and the Christian in its totality, for true worship is a living offering of self and the world to God, in Christ through the Holy Spirit, and this offering leaves out no aspect of existence. Already the Old Testament in some way communicates this truth to us, that the moment we as individuals animated by the Spirit and then as a communal reality praise the Lord, we thank Him, we make Him the object of our supplications. God becomes present in us and we become the true temple, that is, the true place where God's presence dwells. The true temple, according to Christians, is the community of believers itself. Precisely, Paul says to the communities he addressed, you are the temple of God. About 100 students from many countries, lay and consecrated, took part in the refresher. They also participated in excursions to holy places, which are a key part of these three days of training. Archaeology, theology and pastoral care come together in a theme that touches on a central aspect of contemporary culture, the relationship with the mystery of God that finds its privileged moment in worship. Worship is the soul of history precisely because it is the basis of culture, but it remains for today's Christians an area that needs to be rediscovered and relearned. Guardiamo anche le nostre celebrazioni, siamo a contatto con la stessa vita di Dio che ci viene incontro. We also look at our celebrations. We are also in contact with God's own life. However, if we also look at people's faces, sometimes we see sleepy faces. We see people who are not involved in what we are celebrating, whereas maybe in a modern worship, like a rock star concert might be, we see the moved faces, the people very engaged, emotionally involved even though none of these big stars from the entertainment world can give life to the people attending a concert. So where is the thing? What we need to do, definitely also we as church people, is to try to help people to understand the beauty of what we celebrate. It is the life itself, the fullness, the light, the joy that we in our worship experience. And sometimes the way we also live our worship does not help people understand its beauty. At the same time, we must try to help people who have given up their faith in Christianity to follow an alternative spirituality. Everyone needs a spirituality, even those who profess to be atheists or agnostics. We need to help these people understand that their search is beautiful, but that life lies only in Jesus Christ. Everything else is something in danger of being a deception or a promise that never actually leads to true joy il rischio di essere di inganno o una sorta anche di, di promessa che poi in realtà non porta mai alla gioia vera. Open yourself to a gesture of solidarity and support the mission of the custody of the Holy Land. The Christian Media Center spreads the good news of Jesus by making known to the world the spirituality of the holy places and the lives of the Christians who live here. Your contribution will help us bring the proclamation of the risen Lord, the most urgent of all, to men and women of every language and nation. To help us concretely, open the QR code. Your choice makes a difference.